Hello everyone. Welcome to Vpower. This is Anupam Pushkar. Thank you for tuning into this video. In this video we are going to see how we realize automation integrate with vCloud Director. This is a new feature which is available in Realize Automation 8.6. Part of this video, there is a vCloud Director installation as well. It's a very basic installation, a single instance, no HA, nothing, just a vCloud Director instance, which has been done in my lab. Again, VRA will get integrated to vCloud Director. So this is what I have used this uh, vCloud Director setup for. This is a much awaited feature for all the telecom providers or you can say service providers who are having, you know, offering cloud services to a lot of customers. And I think uh, definitely appreciate VMware finally listening and getting it on 8.6. It's a very niche, you can say, not much of the features available. Maybe down the line they will integrate with more and more service. But any point of time, if you need any more service, you definitely have a Terraform integration. Please use Terraform, run all your scripts to vCloud Director and get your anything as a service done. Before we kick in the installation, just make sure that uh, we have vCloud Director 10.2 or 10.3 or above with the integration with Realize Automation 8.6. And um, if you're doing a vCloud Director installation on your lab, make sure that you have NFS shared available where all your database for the vCloud Director is there. And let's directly jump into the installation stage. We'll go to vCenter. I have already have an old instance of vCloud Director. Let me power it off and delete it. I don't need this particular VM. Let me do a fresh new deployment. Delete from disk. Yes. OK, right click. Deploy from OVF, local file. I'm using 10.3 for my deployment. Let me give the host name of the VM. CD hyphen zero one. Let's click on next. Let me choose the host. Next. Guys, you can fast forward if you have already known how to do the deployment. Just have a review. Except Eula. Next. You can fast forward wherever possible is. I prefer to choose medium or a small it's up to your choice for your lab it's completely on your lab purpose in my case uh, i will do medium because i need little cpu more for this deployment make it thin let me select the disk click on next and eth0 vm network and yeah one more network you need basically for the database so this will be vcdtv next let me provide all the information for NTP. a.pool.ntp.org. I'll provide the password. Uncheck this. Uh, enable SSH login. Uh, we'll provide the gateway, domain name, marvel.com. Yeah, let's update all the other information. I'll put my ETH0 uh, IP address and subnet mask. Then there will be ETH1. This is the database uh, for the database connection. So if you remember in the previous, we have uh, configured it a different network. Uh, let me don't save. Okay, this is the database information, the disk format, okay. It's thick, oh, oh let me go back. I click change it to thin. I remember I made it like thin, but okay, nevertheless. Let's click on next. Next, uh, all the information are filled. Next, we can quickly review and do finish. Okay. So, let the deployment of an appliance be done. And we will be quickly back. I'll do a fast forward of the video. And I'll resume back once the deployment is ready. 
so guys appliance is now deployed let's power it on appliance take like a little while to get power on and initialize once uh, this get initialized you'll have like your standard blue screen and you will come to know how to access your the cloud director so let's wait a little more while i'll cut the shot directly and jump into the section where my blue screen is on now it still take a little more while you know in the back end to process everything and uh, within maybe like five or ten minutes depending on again your performance where you're deploying and the back end layer it will come up with the own time and should not take more than five to ten minutes here click on advance Except proceed. Let's log in and configure the NFS. Uh, yeah, I just the NFS share which we I said you we will be needing it. We'll put the database password. Uh, yeah, disable it. We'll provide the administrator username as administrator and we'll provide the password. Let's confirm the password. Full name. We see the admin. We'll put some email address. Click on next, system name, installation ID, submit. So guys, this is also going to take a little while because it has to run a lot of backend script. I've done a fast forward. Now click on the URL and this is where your vCloud director is now accessible. So, so you put the IP address of the vCloud director slash provider. Then you put your username password which we have given administrator and the password and you are successfully logged into your vCloud director so you can see it is like a blank screen now it keep refreshing in the back end because it takes some time to come up so once uh, this is up we'll go to infrastructure the first thing is to add vCenter server instance so we are going to add a vCenter uh, server provide the name to the vCenter server the URL, fully qualified domain name, uh, then your username password. In my case, I'm just using my SSO account itself. I've not created any specific account to handle this. And then we can simply click on next. Uh, just make sure that all the information updated here is correct. Once you click next, it will ask for NSXV. We are not having NSX in our vCloud director integrated, so I'll just simply disable it and I'll click on next. There's no more information required. Enable tenant access. Uh, this is something, you know, um, uh, I have disabled it so that, you know, I can use this on the specific one. So I'll keep that uh, disabled. Uh, generate proxies, uh, even that is not required. Even I will keep that as a disable. Okay, let's uh, disable our tenant access and we go ahead with the next. So we are almost ready, just click on finish. And once you click on finish, it will again take a while for entire uh, things, our basically we center to be added. It takes some while because it need to sync the database. So once everything is done, you can uh, go to resource pool or everything. You can have a look to it. It takes some time to come up. Now let's click on uh, cloud resources, organization. Uh, in, in the infrastructure, we have this vCenter, right? So that's connected. Everything looks good. It's still populating. It takes some time. Let's click on provider VDC. This is the first thing. So we can check on cloud cell that our current instance is there. Uh, we'll click, let's click on provider VDC. In the provider VDC, we'll provide uh, a name. So we can see our vCenter is visible. Uh, actually, some of the resources are not available. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, we'll still provide uh, PV, uh, VDC. Let's click on Next. Select the vCenter. We can see our resource pool is there. Select the resource pool. So hardware version, uh, I would suggest you to have it uh, 
19 uh, in the when I was making a video I make it 18 but I would strictly say uh, I have made it like 12 but no I would suggest to have it 19 that is the anything lower is supported so I did this wrong when I was actually making this video now in this in this case we are not having any network pool because we are not using NSX so we click on next no network pool and we'll review all the settings click on finish and we are good so provider VDC uh, takes its again own time to uh, be ready uh, it should not take much time um, maybe uh, less than five minutes to be ready depend upon your infrastructure size for sure so it still says status as busy once this is ready uh, our next step will be to create organizations and uh, we can even you know quickly go to realize automation and have that validated let's wait for it to finish before we do anything it should not take this much time but it's fine let it take yeah let's jump into realize automation and quickly have a look what is required to be configured on realize automation sign in click on cloud assembly and then we'll go to infrastructure we'll directly scroll down to the last which is for integration this is the cloud account uh, vCenter okay so this is my old vCenter which is not there so let me delete it quickly um, this vCenter I don't have anymore so I'm just deleting it So it's giving me some error while deleting it. Uh, sorry guys, just, uh, okay, our PVDC is ready. We can see provider VDC is ready. Now we'll create organization. Let's create organization. Let the organization be Mazdar. Mazar is, or you can say customer one. Mazar is one of the location which is in uh, Abu Dhabi. So I just give that name. I just change with the customer one to Mazar. Let's click on create. That is all we need to create a new organization. Mazar in Abu Dhabi. Okay. So we create a new org VDC. Uh, let's give a name to this org VDC as prod. It will be attached to that uh, VDC. Basically, we are allocating the resources here, uh, which will be carved out for this particular project. Uh, we'll as assign the uh, resource pools. Let me keep it uh, pretty much standard. Let me click on next. Storage policy will be anything. Uh, thin provisioning, click on next. So you can again uh, customize it, the storage allocation for me. I'll not assign the network pool now. We will do it later on and let's click on finish. So once this is done, our uh, organization VDC is also ready. Now our task is to integrate this uh, organization VDC to the part of Viralize Automation. Okay. This is basically uh, org VDC template you can create, uh, but for NSX V or T, uh, you can see our prod VDC is ready. Uh, basically, this prod uh, VDC is integrated with the org, which is Mastar. Uh, okay, let's click on this. You can uh, check out that uh, there are no virtual machines within uh, Mastar organization. Let's click on B Cloud Director. Now you can see this is my org, Mastar, and under Mastar we have a production uh, VDC. And let's click on Vilas Automation now and add B Cloud Director. Let's give any name to the second VDC. No, VDC, let it be in uppercase. Okay, 
uh, we'll specify the URL. The URL is for Wicklow Directive. This is my URL till provider. Let me copy and see. This is what URL they are looking for. Where is that? I'll provide the username password which I have configured to create Orc PDC. PVDC, yeah. We'll put the organization name. Organization name is Mustar. So you can say organization name is Mustar and the full name is Mustar AD. So we just have to use uh, Mustar. Click on validate. Untrusted certificate accept. Oh, okay. There is an error. Okay. Let me refresh and log in again and do one quick change. So I log in again to vCloud Director and I'll create an account within uh, Mazdar this time because I feel that uh, it needs its own dedicated account because administrator at uh, uh, account is like a standard account, right? So let's go to administration, users, let's create a new user. So this user is actually a dedicated user for Mazdar uh, or VDC. We'll provide the username as Mustar only. We'll specify a password, standard password which we keep. We'll again keep the same password, uh, user quota, uh, the role what we need. Let's choose he be the organization administrator, right? The full access pretty much. Now click on finish, save. Now let's slack login. So once we log in, it's successfully logged in. Let's go to our portal and use the account which we created just now, Mustar, and the password. Let's click on validate, finger crossed, it should work. Yes, success. Now you can see we have only one VDC, uh, or, uh, so we'll select that click on add and we are good so guys we have successfully added our vCloud director to realize automation and this is a very simple and fastest way I can show it to you in the later videos I'll try to add more uh, about uh, integrations and everything thank you guys thank you for watching this video bye bye